do it. Hey guys, this is Versatile from Project Phoenix Media. This is part two of a two-part video tutorial series showing you how to use Pop Starter with your FAT PS2 internal hard drive, and I'm actually using the Freemic Boot method to load my files. So, in this particular video, I'm going to show you exactly how to transfer your PlayStation 1 games from your computer to your PS2 hard drive. We're going to use an adapter from USB to IDE. It's the fastest method. Sure, you could use the USB front port on your PS2 or use FTP, but those methods are way too slow, and I do not recommend it. So, let's do this. You go to the More Info section. Here's a link back to the website. We talked about this in Part 1. Basically, if you go to the internal HDD installation tutorial... Scroll all the way to the bottom. We're going to be using this transfer to VCD files using the PFS shell method. And I have a link to this page and also you can download this link here. It's going to be a zip file. We talked about this briefly in part one video tutorial. And here's a real nice picture um, text tutorial as well. And we'll talk about it in this video. Okay, another item, and this is purely optional, this is my own personal thing, I'll have a link to this in the more video description, is after you connect your PS2 hard drive to your computer and you turn everything on, you need to figure out what is the drive letter number assigned to it. For me, the fastest way to figure that out without guessing is to use the WinHip program. So if you recall from other PS2 video tutorials I've done, WinHip is a real nice program to help transfer PS2 image files to your PS2 hard drive, but we're going to use this again to detect what is the device number sent or attached to our PS2 hard drive. So I'm going to right click the program, say run as administrator, and then what I'm going to do is go to select drive, and we notice that my drive number 4 is the PS2. So 4, remember that number, it might be a different number on your particular computer configuration, but in this particular case is number 4 for me. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go back to pop starter files, right? And if you right click the PFS shell, let me delete the folder from before. Right click the PFS shell zip file you downloaded, right click and just say like extract to his own folder. So I'm going to use 7 zip and do that. In addition, let me go get my VCD game. So I copied it. Where did I put that? Over here, coolborders.vcd. And I'm going to right click, copy, or you can cut it as well and go back to my PFS shell and paste it here. Okay, so now what we're going to do is right-click PFS shell, and I'm using Windows 10 64-bit, if you guys are curious, as a reference point, and say run as administrator. Okay, so here we go. Here's the magic. So we're going to type in device HDD, and then type in your number. For me, it's number four, and then colon. Press enter. And we see that this is good because it says drive status zero, format version, all these zeros in number two. If you selected the wrong number or you're just guessing, if I were to do this again, let's say device HDD3 colon, we see that it says drive status one, format version, all zeros. No, that's not what you want. So make sure you do it right and you'll save yourself a lot of time. Like I said, I use the WinHip method to eliminate a lot of that hassle. So device HDD4 colon, enter. Okay, this looks good. Now, we're going to mount the partition, mount, space, underscore, underscore, sorry about that, mount, space, underscore, underscore, dot, helps you click on the command screen, dot, P-O-P-S, and then if you made other partitions like a zero, or maybe a one, or, or two, or three, or four, or whatever it is, so I'm going to do a dot pops. And we know it's working successfully because it just mounted it, okay? Now what we're going to do is we're going to transfer the game. And make sure you name it exactly to help save some time and headaches later on. So put, and then the game is called coolborders.vcd. If you want to double check it, just go back to here, coolborders.vcd. Everything's capital letters. And press enter. Uh, pro tip, and I'll have this uh, talk about in the second half of this video, is make sure your ELF file is named exactly the same. So... My ELF file, if you recall, is called coolborders.elf, everything in capital letters. Here is called coolborders.vcd, everything is capital letters. If you have, if you rename this like all lowercase and your ELF file is all uppercase, it's not going to work. Just make sure to eliminate your headaches and your troubleshooting issues. Make sure your game file, VCDs, and your ELF files, they have the exact name, file name, all capital letters, and you're good to go. 
Okay, so now at this point you can go ahead mount more VCD games again and again and again until you're satisfied with your PlayStation 1 game library. Once you are satisfied and only you will know when you're satisfied, then you can stop and you can say you mount. Oh, sorry. Let's make it all lowercase. You mount, right? So we just unmounted and now we say exit and we exit the program. And then finally you can go down here and just eject your adapter. If you need an adapter, I'll have a link in the more info section to an adapter that I'm using. It's basically a USB to IDE adapter. So I plug into my hard drive, I turn everything on, I plug in the USB to my computer, and then it's recognized. If your PS2 hard drive is not recognized, it might help if you just try a different USB port on your computer. Sometimes that does wonders as well. Just make sure that when you have the WinHip program, if your WinHip program can recognize your PS2 hard drive, then you can do the rest of this tutorial successfully and you can pat yourself on the back. So now, with that said, let's jump straight into the second half of this video tutorial and show you how to run your freshly installed PS1 games on your PS2 hard drive. Let's do this. Okay, so this next portion of the video tutorial, let me show you how to play your PS1 games off your internal hard drive. So, what I'm gonna do, and we talked about this in part one, I'm gonna turn on the PS2. I'm actually gonna hold down R1 right now, and then, this is like a shortcut to go straight into you launch alpha. It's a pretty neat trick. All right, we're good to go. So that saves you a few seconds there. You don't have to see the main menu of FMCB. Good times. Okay, so we're going to wait for this to finish loading the HDD modules. Okay, so now what we're going to do is press circle. We're going to go down to HDDD0. And just to show you that this worked, go to pops. And we'll see that my game that I have transferred over using the PFS shell program is here. One thing to note is whatever your VCD game is called, make sure that your ELF file matches it like 100%. So notice that it's called coolborders.vcd. Everything is capital letters. So make sure that when you run your ELF file, that it also has the same notation, coolborders.elf. Same exact file name. Everything is capital letters and no issues. So right now, I just go ahead, select the .elf, press circle, and now the game is going to load. Give it a couple seconds or whatever, and pretty soon you'll have your game working. If you have a, a game disc that is multi-disc, take a look at the forum. There's a real nice tutorial showing you how to use multi-disc games. I don't have any multi-disc games at the moment, but um, go to the forum. They definitely have a good guide there. Web systems. All right, so let me just show you some quick performance here. Cool. Go for it. Music is working great for this particular game. Uh, there's no lag issues or anything like that. Showtime. It really is a lot of good times. So if you're looking at a neat way to save your laser... Uh, store a lot of ridiculous PS1 games on your internal hard drive, Ready? then the Pop Starter Edition is definitely the way to go. Now, it's been a long time since I played this game, so I don't remember all the tricks and everything. But at least you can see that, yeah, it works great. And hopefully your games will work great as well, too. So that is today's video game tutorial. If you guys have any nitpicky questions, leave a comment here on the YouTube page. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Once again, thank you for watching. Take care. Bye.